Welcome back to the lecture series of Basic Electrical Engineering. In this session, I am going to discuss the concept of rotative magnetic field. So, the rotative magnetic field is a basic concept in the operation of three-phase induction motor. If I want to study the three-phase induction motor operation, I should know the concept of rotative magnetic field. Remember, the rotative magnetic field is responsible for producing the torque required to drive the rotor. First of all, you have to remember that as soon as you provide the three-phase supply, there will be a production of the rotating magnetic field at the stator side. The rotating magnetic field is given by phi r, phi y and phi b. Remember, phi r, phi y and phi b all are 120 degree apart. If I draw phi r, you can draw like uh, this is phi y and this will be phi b. Please do remember that all are 120 degree apart. Okay, the angle between the each flux component, each magnetic field component, that will be 120 degree apart. So, it is a rotative magnetic field, it's not a pulsating, uh, like a pulsating one, that you have to remember. Moving further, so first of all, you have to consider like phi r, let us consider phi r, let me change the color, so I will be writing using black color, yeah, phi r. There is a small derivation, what is the value of resultant flux, I need to calculate so let me write like phi r, phi r equal to phi m into sin omega t, that is nothing but phi m sin theta, omega t is nothing but theta, right, phi r. Next I am going to write like phi y, phi y is equal to phi m sin omega t minus 120 degree, that is nothing but phi m into sin theta minus sin theta minus 120 degree. Make a note of this. Now let me write phi b phi m sin omega t minus 240 degree. That is nothing but phi m into sin theta minus 240 degree. So, by the way, let us calculate the resultant flux, phi r. Resultant flux is phi r. Phi r is nothing but the vector sum of phi r plus phi y plus phi b. Kindly call equation number 1. So, let me uh, start with the case number 1. First case, case number 1. I am assuming that, okay, initially assuming that, theta equal to 0 degree. Therefore, phi r is written as phi m into sin theta, that means sin 0, that is equal to 0, phi r equal to 0. Phi y is nothing but phi m into sin minus 120 degree. Similarly, phi b is equal to phi m into sin this will be how much it is? 0 minus 240. That is minus 240 degree. So, now you need to calculate the value. Now, what if what you are supposed to do is, anyway, this value is 0 only, no headache. Now, I am going to 5 is equal to minus, minus 5m into root 3 by 2. Here, 5m into root 3 divided by 2. So, now what I am going to do is, let us draw, this is my phi r, phi r, this is my phi, phi r, phi y and phi b. Now, anyway, phi r is going to be 0, right? Phi r is going to be 0. I will be writing like phi r tends to 0. What else remaining? Phi y is remaining, right? This is my phi y and this is my phi b, r y b. Anywhere you can take, any direction you can take, it's up to you, right? So, now uh, the resultant flux will be like this only. I can draw the resultant flux. This, this will be the resultant flux, phi r, small letter r, phi r. So, let me complete my parallelogram. I'm going to complete my parallelogram, okay? So, remember, 
this will be 60 degree right 60 degree this will be 60 degree now i am going to apply par uh, parallelogram law of vector addition i'll be applying parallelogram law of vector addition so phi resultant that is equal to square root of phi y square plus phi b square plus 2 into magnitude of phi y magnitude of phi b and cos theta cos theta means 60 degree so please substitute the value what is phi y so phi by value will be um, you can substitute minus root 3 by 2 okay minus root 3 by 2 phi m the whole square plus root 3 by 2 phi m the whole square plus 2 into root 3 by 2 phi m into root 3 by 2 phi m into so what is cos 60 cos 60 is nothing but half 1 by 2 so do one thing kindly do the simplification these 2 and 2 get cancelled so remaining square root of 3 phi m square 3 phi m square by 4 plus 3 phi m square by 4 plus 3 phi m square by so root 3 into root 3 3 phi m square divided by 4 correct so that is nothing but square root of 3 times 3 into phi m square divided by 4 3 into 3 means 9, right? 9 phi m square by 4. This is my phi r. Therefore, phi r equal to 3 by 2 phi m. So, remaining I am going to write here 3 by 2 phi m. Phi r equal to 3 by 2 phi m. phi r equal to 3 by 2 phi m. So, again you simplify phi r equal to 1 by 2 phi m. So, the resultant flux is nothing but 1 by 2 multiplied by maximum flux. This is the final derivation for uh, the concept of rotative magnetic field. So, rotary is not directly connected to the supply like uh, through Faraday's electromagnetic induction. Uh, like the rotative magnetic field induces the voltage in the rotor conductor. Therefore, since the conductor is short circuited, the current starts flowing. So, that uh, rotating current that is going to be responsible for production of the torque, uh, which will drive the motor. Ultimately, uh, like uh, always remember that uh, there is a like a difference between rotative magnetic field and the rotor speed. The rotor try to catch up the rotative magnetic field. That's what induction motor starts working or in induction motors operate. So, no external mechanism is required to start the operation. Therefore, we can say very sure that three-phase induction motor is a self-starting machine. This is a basic concept of rotative magnetic field. In the coming session, I'm going to discuss about the slip and slip speed and also I'll be doing the numerical example. Thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you happy learning. Wish you all the very best for your competitive examination and university examination. If you are watching our channel first time, I request you to subscribe and kindly share with your uh, friends and relatives.